Hello, my name is John Spangle, and uh, thank you for turning into my YouTube channel. Uh, I always start out to quick talk about how I'm I'm disabled veteran, so I don't get out that much. Actually, this everybody's worried about coronavirus, and for me, it's I don't get around a lot of people, so I don't care to be around a lot of people crowds at a time. I don't like to be around crowded areas, so it doesn't affect me in that manner. I don't live in fear. I I have survived cancer. I do have some health issues. But the thing is, I know that, like with my cancer, once uh, I was told I had cancer, I was in stage four. And my wife and I was, of course, my wife was <laughs> upset. Um, I just, a lot of times, I've, I said before in previous videos, I was sad for my family, but at the same time, I was ecstatic. I had mixed feelings because I look forward to seeing and being with God. I live with that hope every day that he is there for me. No matter what the bad things I've done in my life, what I have sinned, I've asked for forgiveness, and my father's went for me. So especially now today, it's exciting times. I look at things different. Everybody's depressed and anxious, and I'm just it's like, Time is short. It really is. And soon, rapture of the church will happen if I don't die beforehand. I'll, we'll be, I'll be raptured up along with other others of the body of Christ. I look forward to being with God. And it's something that every day I get up and it's like, this could be it. But until then, I, I want to try to be a better example than I was as a younger man as I get older for my family. And those around me and that's just why i'm doing these videos for someone to look at i've always talked about at least i can reach one person it would help so i get excited sometimes i rattle too much it depends on the subject some are kind of uh some aren't i try to explain about everything i look at things where i'm not a scholar i don't try to have the answers for everything like the subject we're going to talk about today is do animals have a soul I think there's something there about animals. I, I love him. I have a, a pet cat. I call him Patches. He's hey, we got him around the time of my cancer, and uh, he's been there for me and keeps scratching at the door outside. He wants to be in the room, but he'd be all over me trying to make this video. But he'll curl up and just lay there for me. And and there's a bond between a man, a uh, person. It's not just man, but man and woman and an animal. There, there's a bond there. And that's something I want to talk about. It's something I had thought about a lot of times when my grandkids had said something to me about, Papa, what about animals? Are they going to be animals in heaven? So I'm going to start out with uh, Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord hath made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, she, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest ye shall die. And the serpent said unto the woman, He shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day thereof your eyes will be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Now there's some things here that I wanted to put real quick. For one, there's a communication. And I do believe that's true. Before the fall of man, Adam and Eve communicated with the animals. I'm not saying they spoke a language. It, it could, I don't know. They communicated with each other. It's not like Dr. Doolittle. We watched that with our grandson not too long ago. They rented that movie and, and we watched Dr. Doolittle with him. I don't understand. A lot of people will say this was talking about Satan. When it talks about the serpent, it's talking about Satan, as in Satan's the serpent. I believe that Satan possessed the serpent. Uh, a lot of people with some of my ideas, they give me a hard time and make fun of me. I expect that because I have belief in God and, and nothing surprises me about God. One prime example is I've talked about giants. I did a video about giants. And I believe 
with giants all over the world. Before the flood, they were with giants, and after the flood, they're different variations. In the Promised Land, they say 26 tribes, giants. I say there was 26, but about 10 more, about 36 tribes, because you have sub tribes of giants, and I, I talked about that in a previous video. But between in the North America, between the years 1800 and 1950, there was over 1,500 newspaper articles about different bones found all over North America, ranging from sizes anywhere from seven foot up to 12 feet. And uh, of course, everything going to the Smithsonian Institute. And recently we've had within the last couple of years, something like that, a whistleblower as they call them, come out of the Smithsonian Institute said, yes, there are a lot of bones that they have of giants, but they, they got rid of it. There's a cover up going on worldwide I talked to somebody who thought who's kind of mockingly at me saying, uh, "Man, are you crazy? There's there's no giants. I never. Yes. Oh, that means that the whole world is trying to cover this up. Obviously, the world is run by Satan. So we had dominion and we gave it up. So yeah, I don't I don't see a problem with that. I actually had a family member talk to my wife not too long ago and talk about my insanity, believe it or not, uh, someone that's dear to me, but because of some of my belief systems. And my wife's like, uh, he gets this from years of study. He don't, he, I've been known, you know, that person was calling call me a conspiracy theory guy and I'm really messed up and he's worried about me. Well, I'm sorry, you're not into God's word. I love you, but you're not into God's word where you should be. So yes, I believe this is actual snake and Satan was able to enter, uh, enter in and, and use the snake to talk to Eve, and, and Eve through Eve, Adam, they both sinned. Another reason why I say that is because of the punishment. Genesis 3, 13 through 15, And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is it that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, but every beast of the field upon thy valley thou shalt go, and dust shalt thou eat all thy days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. And a lot of times people will refer to this as to, uh, through the seed of woman, Jesus is born, and he will fight the serpent. Now, I'm not going to take away the possibility, because there's sometimes dual references to things. But I will say the two verses before is not talking, I do not believe it's talking about Satan. I believe it's talking about the serpent. And the serpent is punished because when we see a snake, it's not what it was. We just see the, as I say, told my grandson, we just see the spine. That's the spine of wherever this creature was. It could have, because I don't think it was a small creature, it was a big creature, and it was very beautiful. So we have no idea. There's things I, I believe God will reveal to us in heaven. And as for the serpent, we'll learn what the serpent originally looked like. Genesis 6, 19 through 20. And that every living thing, all flesh, two of every sort, shall thou bring into the ark to keep them alive with thee. They shall be male and female. A fowls after their kind, cattle after their kind, every creepy thing of the earth after its kind, two of every sort shall come unto Keep them alive. Animals are very important. Uh, not only did God save man, but he also saved a lot of the animals. Exodus 23, 12. Six days thou shalt do thy work, and on the seventh day thou shalt rest, that thine ox and thine ass may rest, and the son of thy handmaid and the stranger may be refreshed. So not only is he talking about resting of humans, resting of the animals, care of the animals. There's a reason for that. Numbers 22, 21 through 33. And Balaam arose up in the morning, saddled his ass, and went with the princess of Moab. God's anger was kindled because he went, and the angel of the Lord stood in the way for an adversary, for an adversary against him. Now he was riding upon his ass, and his two servants were with him. And the ass saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, and his sword drawn in his hand. 
And the ass turned aside out of the way and went into the field. And Balaam smote the ass to turn her into the way. But the angel of the Lord stood in the path of the vineyards, a wall being on this side and a wall on that side. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she thrust herself unto the wall and crushed Balaam's foot against the wall. And he smote her again, meaning he's just whooping her, beating her up. And the angel of the Lord went farther and stood in a narrow place where it was no way to turn either to the right or the left. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she fell down under Balaam. And Balaam's anger was kindled, and he smote the ass with the staff. And the Lord opened the mouth of the ass, and she said unto Balaam, What have I done unto thee? Thou hast smitten me these three things. Excuse me. And Balaam said unto the ass, Because thou hast mocked me, I would there were a sword in my hand, for now would I kill thee. And the ass said unto Balaam, Am I not thine ass, upon which thou hast ridden ever since I was thine unto this day? And was I ever want to do so unto thee? And he said, Nay. The Lord opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, and his sword drawn in his hand. And he bowed down at his head and fell flat on his face. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Where therefore hast thou spent thine ass with these three times? Behold, I went out to withstand thee, because the way is perverse before me. He was going away that God didn't want him to go. And the ass saw me and turned from me these three times. Unless he had turned from me, surely now also I had slain thee and saved her alive. So there's a few things here. One thing he talks to his ass, and a lot of people are like, well, that's metaphor. No, I, I believe that really happened. For some reason, we, we get these things that we try to rationalize God. We try to put gay, God's capabilities into our own. And it's not beyond me to think our creator can actually make an animal speak. And the reason I wrote this in there was for two things. One, I was getting to the point that the animal saw something that the man did not. I don't think it was a revealing as in, well, I'm going to reveal myself to the ass, the angel. I'm, there's a lot of times in instances where we have animals react differently. You could walk into a room. Um, I was with a friend one time and we were talking and all of a sudden the cat had acted funny and looked in the corner of the room and was hissing. And, uh, and I was like, well, there's something right there. That cat sees that we don't see. There's a lot of things that they have different abilities in us that they, they sense. And I do believe a lot of Native Americans talk about animals. And I do believe there is an, a stronger sense of spirituality that the animals can sense or see things that to us humans we cannot. The idea that the man actually talked to his, his donkey and, and all that, I, I believe, happened. And I know people are going to mock me over that. Let them. I, I don't mind that. Um, it doesn't say, you know, he was surprised because I'm sure he reacted surprisingly when he started talking to him. And then he was like, wait a minute. Well, you. And then his eyes were opened. Job 12, 7 through 10. But ask now the beasts, and they shall teach thee, and the fowls of the air, and they shall te tell thee, or speak to the earth, and I, it shall teach thee, and the fishes of the sea shall declare unto thee. Who knoweth all these things that the land of the Lord hath wrought this, and whose hand is the soul of every living thing and the breath of all mankind? So this right here, to me, is an example. There's a soul of living things. Everything has a soul. A soul. I apologize for that. Meaning animals do too. Job 35, 11, Who teaches us more than the beasts of the earth and makes us wiser than the fowls of the heaven? So animals, we can learn from animals. So they're not, a lot of times we talk, we try to, I mean, yes, humans are above animals. But we try to make out like these animals are nothing. They're not smart. We They got an instinct. It just it means that they don't understand things. That's not true. Psalm 147.9, he giveth to the beast to his food and to the young ravens which cry. Means he provides. He's using an example that he, he provides for these animals. He provides for us. Proverbs 13.10. A righteous man regardeth the life of his beast, but the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. So it talks about an example of animal rights. If these animals were nothing and weren't important, then why would they have rights or what's the matter for their rights? Proverbs 27.23. An example of caring to animals. Be thou diligent to know the state of thy flocks and look well to thy herds. 
in Isaiah 11, 6 through 9, talks about behavior. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and that calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. And the cow and bears shall feed their young ones, shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. And the suckling child shall play on the hole of the asp, and the winged child shall put his hand or the hand on the cockatrice's den. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord, and as the waters cover the sea. Now I'll put this in here for two reasons. One, this is during the Millennium Kingdom. Uh, if you read it and understand where this is coming from, read the whole chapter. This is during the uh, after the the rapture, after tribulation. Jesus Christ has come back. He's reigning for a thousand years, and, it, and that's this point when this is happening. It talks about a cockatrice's den, which is a creature. Since then, there there's documentation, and, and when I talk about myths and one of my previous videos, I, this is one of the animals I talk about. So a lot of things. That's the reason I want to put that in there. A lot of things are going to come back during the Millennium Kingdom. All kinds of creatures that was before or extinct will come back again. And they will be changed. Uh, they'll be The meat eaters won't eat meat. They'll eat grass like a cow. Uh, God's capable of making anything. He's capable of changing the digestive system of an animal. Hosea 2.18, And in that day will I make a covenant for them with the beast of the field, and with the fowls of heaven, and with the creeping things of the ground. And I will break the bow and the sword in the battle of the earth, and will make them to lie down safely. Meaning, also, I believe this is time frame of Millennium Kingdom, that he makes a covenant with these animals. And the covenant is a promise that God can't break. And to make a covenant, it's very important to, you know, he's letting them know that they can, they'll be safe. That next one's going to kill them. Death is gone. Matthew 6, 26. Behold the fowls of the air, for they saw not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them, and ye not much better than they. So he's, he gives an example that he, if he provides for animals, he'll provide for man. And James 3, 7, For every kind of beasts and birds and serpents and things in the sea is tamed and hath been tamed to mankind. Nix explains about the tongue. It's easier to tame a tongue than it is to tame a beast, but we have and are capable of taming anything. And lastly, Revelation 5, 13, And every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and such are as in the sea, and all that are in them, heard I saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth on the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. So God uses all creation for witnesses. It shows his love and his divine caring for everything. And these creatures are a part of that. I do believe that our pets die, that they will be in heaven with us. And if you notice, like I watched a video about a veteran uh, he had died, and his dog, uh, the way he reacted, and on his grave, the dog kept going there and, and laying down. There is a connection between man and animals. I do believe animals have a soul. And obviously, for example, an animal can make a choice because the serpent, not the devil, the serpent, was punished for what it did. So it had understanding that it was being used. And so I look forward to learning more and I look forward to being with God and learning about, about the animals. But I do believe that they're just not a creature that dies and that's it and it's the end of them. They go on spiritually. Thank you for watching this video and I hope uh, to make some more in the future and, and talk about God more. And may God bless you.